Hi, I'm Carolyn Colanda McCormick and I'd like to demonstrate today how to make this tree quilt using the patterns from my latest book called In the Pines from CNT. I'm also going to be demonstrating how to use the new Add a Quarter Plus and this is a great tool for when you're paper piecing. So when you're paper piecing, one of the things that I really um, like about my books is that I tell you how big to cut everything. So it's either a square rectangle or a half square triangle. Then what you need to do is mark all of your pieces. And I just take a piece of scrap paper, mark what it is, and put it on there. So then when I'm ready to make the quilt, all I have to do is follow the position chart, and I don't have to rethink what fabric is going to go in what position. So it really makes it easy. So when you're paper piecing, these are your patterns. So I recommend getting a spiral bound, um, do a three ring binder or something, because you want these patterns to lie flat. So what we're going to do first of all, I've made my copies. This is my pattern. What I'm going to do is trim this off an eighth to a quarter inch away. By doing that it gets rid of the bulk and it makes it easier when you're putting your pieces on. Now when people are paper piecing, sometimes they get a little confused because they have to put the piece right side up on the back side of the pattern. They can't see the line so they don't know where the number one piece is going to go. What I recommend is put it on a white piece of paper. Your lines are going to pop through so then you can see where your number one is at. Just use a little bit of glue and then position your number one piece. Now before you add the next piece, what you need to do is take your outer quarter plus, which has the tapered edge on it, place it on the line between one and two and fold it over and just crease it. Flip the ruler over and trim it off. By doing this, you're accomplishing three things. You're getting rid of that extra fabric, giving yourself a quarter inch seam allowance, and it's also giving you a nice straight line so you know where to put your next piece. So I have a 45 degree angle here, so I'm going to position this just like this. So I have a 45 here, 45 here, kind of mirror image. What I'm looking for is I want to have it at least a quarter inch away from this line that's going to give me my seam allowance. So we have it positioned. Now what you're going to do is sew it. And when you sew, you start before the line and stitch down beyond the line. Don't start and stop at this position because sometimes your seams or your stitches will come out. So it's better to go too far. Set your stitch length at 18 to 20 stitches per inch. What that's going to do is perforate that paper, make it easier to tear out when you do get to that point. And when you press, pressing is really important. I just take my iron and I use a hot dry iron, no steam at this point, and just take the nose of the iron and push it out like this and that should press it really well for you. So let's, we're going to do the next piece. And before we put our number three piece on, we're going to take the ruler again, place it on the line, fold this up and over. And do you see because you went too far how this is pulled up, all you do is pull it down, crease it, flip it over, and trim. I put it back on this white piece of paper because I want to see where the angle at, is at. This one here I'm going to position just like this. The other little trick is, is if you're using a light fabric on top of a dark, sometimes you will get shadowing. To eliminate that shadowing, all you need to do is position the light fabric just a little bit above the dark, and that will eliminate the shadowing. So then we're going to do, we're going to do number four. Same thing. Always trim before you sew. And this way we've sewed both ways. We're just going to pull this down, crease it, flip it over, trim it off. And there again, now we're going to put it back on this white piece of paper because we have a 90 degree here. We're just going to center this just like this. And then do like you did before, just start stitching before the line and stitch beyond. This one here, it's just another 90 degree, so we're just going to position it just like this, so it'll sew right on. This one here, we have a 45 degree angle, so 
we're going to position it here. Make sure it's outside here a little ways. Sew it on so that it'll fit in there perfectly. Now after you get all of your fabric sewn on to your pieces, what you're going to need to do is trim off and clean this up. Remember I told you to do an eighth to a quarter inch? Now what we're going to do is we're going to clean this up. So I use a ruler and I always line up this dark line here with the quarter inch on the ruler. To me it's easier to do it like this and I can manipulate it than it is to look down on the side. So just line this up and trim it all the way around before you sew your units together. And I also clip my little points. I usually just take a pair of scissors and just hold it tight and just trim those off because when you're putting your units together, it's gonna to make it a little easier to match it up. When you sew your units together, you wanna to pin it. And when you're paper piecing, you want it to be precise, so that's where you're gonna pin it. So you're just gonna stick a pin straight down and make sure everything's lined up. And then don't twist this pin. What you wanna do is pin on both sides. And I've already sewn this, but you, you have an idea of what I'm talking about. And then you take this pin out, then when you sew, you sew from one edge all the way over. And just make sure everything is lined up. And then when I press, I always just press one direction. So I'll take the nose of the iron, and I actually will use steam at this point because the steam relaxes the paper, makes it easier to handle. And so I just take the iron and just push it like here, get it pressed really well. And then the trick is, is take the paper out of the back side of your seam allowance. The reason I like to do that is it eliminates some of the bulk. And then when you are ready to tear this paper out, you're not fishing in underneath and having to pull that out. So it's just easier to do. One other step I wanted to show you is that sometimes people think, well, I have one piece of fabric and one unit. How do I position that? This is the easiest one of all. So I will just put it back on this white piece of paper, add a couple pieces of, or dabs of blue, position it here, and then I'm ready to trim. So hopefully those little trip tricks that I have showed you will make you feel confident and comfortable in tackling the trees in, in the pines.